In this video today, I'm going to share my absolute best VR settings for the Reverb G2 for both high-end and mid-range computers. And at the moment, we're just about to take off from Edinburgh. And I'm going to get straight into this. So, first of all, it's important to ensure that whatever settings you're running, that you can run them. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. But don't be afraid to turn those settings down, okay? And at the moment, for my high-end 4090-13900 based computer, which is a beast, this is what I'm running. In fact, the Eagle Eye viewer will notice that they're the same settings as I run with my Pimax Crystal as well. Heavy hitters, well, it's the same as what I said in that video. Make sure that you're careful with clouds. Don't stick them on Ultra, it's just not worth it. You do lose at least 5 frames per second in VR. Level of detail is a real strong hit on performance as well. So keep that down as much as possible. In fact, with the Reva D2, since it doesn't have aspheric lenses, you're not going to see as far out. So back that off as much as you dare, really. I would definitely recommend also taking off Ray March Reflections, Ambient Occlusion, if you're struggling with the performance as well. Now, sorry to interrupt this video quickly, but just to say this video is proudly sponsored by FS Academy, which produced the best tutorials for this sim. Whether you are a GA pilot or airline captain, there's definitely a training package for you, absolutely. And I've done them myself, and I think they're absolutely fantastic, especially because they're from real world pilots and instructors, and they provide excellent uh, resources such as charts, and navigational aids, and all that kind of good stuff. So if you're interested in FS Academy, I'd highly recommend that everyone at least gives it a go once. All the links will be in the description below. And yeah, definitely check them out. And it's why they are sponsoring this video today. I'm now going to share my settings for 3070 based owners. As you can see, very low settings compared to the 4090, of course. But you know what? When you're in the sim in VR, it's not like you really notice that massive degradation in visual quality. So feel free to copy those settings as a benchmark and then do tweaking as necessary for your computer. Because bear in mind, folks, everything I'm saying today is based upon my settings that work for me. And hopefully, somewhere along the line between my settings and your settings, you'll get the optimum performance for your computer because of course there's a million different configurations out there. So let's now talk about TAA and DRSS. Now, I would recommend if you want to use DRSS to stick with the balanced with the Reva G2 and then use the OpenXR toolkit and head to the cast setting with 50% sharpening. That is definitely something I recommend, especially for 3070, 3080 owners. Um, DRSS is definitely your friend. But if you really want to use TAA mode, okay, this is the thing that I've always recommended right from the very get-go with VR in this sim, and I still recommend it today. For mid-range computers, use 100% in render scale in the sim, but in the OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality, I'll show on the screen now, set your manual resolution slider to 70%. That, for whatever reason, helps performance and you get the best amount of clarity for the least amount of, you know, performance hits, if that makes sense. So that's something I'd definitely recommend. But for DLSS, I would recommend keeping that at 100, render scale at 100, and then just using the DLSS slider with cast setting and 50% sharpening. So that covers TAA mode and DLSS. Now, if you do have a high-end system, like a 4090, you will be able to super sample the Reverb G2. There's a few ways you can do that. You could use the OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality, set that to 150%, it will look amazing. Or you could use the override feature of the OpenXR toolkit. That's another way of doing things. And just whack that up as far as it can go. <laughs> and yeah, the image quality is amazing. And with the 4090, you won't suffer such terrible performance drop off. So a few other things to mention is motion reprojection. That is something I am personally a massive fan of. But you might not be, okay? That's fine. 
but the whole point of motion reprojection is that your system needs to always hit the desired FPS figure. I think that's where a lot of people are going wrong. Now the best way to ensure that is to do a stress test on your computer. Go to somewhere like London City with heavy cloud and if you can reach about 30 frames per second motion reprojection there, you are good everywhere. Bear in mind also that if you're using motion reprojection, 45 frames per second is the best target because you're only using one frame, um, extra frame that is, which will mean less artifacts. Of course, the lower you go, whether it's 30 frames per second, you're going to get two frames added in, and at 22.5 frames per second, you're going to get even more, which will show plenty of artifacts on the prop and on the wing and all that kind of stuff. Now, for both mid-range and high-end users, there's a few things I would recommend. That is for DirectX 11 and Hagson, that is GPU scheduling. Now, there's another uh, feature called Prefer... Uh, frame rate over latency that is essentially the turbo mode found in the OpenXR toolkit I personally feel I don't know why this is the case that using the um, turbo mode in the OpenXR toolkit I'll show you what that is now you can see there that seems to have a better boost in frame rate than using it in the OpenXR uh, Windows Mixer LT tools. I don't know why, but that's just the way I found it. Your mileage might vary. And that is it, guys. Literally a short and sweet video, but to show you what settings I use for both mid range and high end users. Now, I would really appreciate it if you give me some feedback as to anything I've missed, and then I'll update this over time. But that's basically it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, as always. I truly appreciate it. Please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Take care and bye for now.